Yeah, we're actually, what we're showing is um, California voters started voting uh, earlier last week. You know, the ballots were actually mailed on the 5th to voters. Some counties mailed a little bit early um, and they started coming in maybe like by Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we started seeing ballots come in. As of Friday night, we had 250,000 uh, ballots that had not only been mailed, but also had gotten through the mail or through the drop box to the county registrar. The county registrar had been able to signature verify these ballots and begin processing them. And when they do that, they actually flag the voter records of people whose ballots have been returned. And one reason they do that is so that if you're a voter and you've returned your ballot, they'll stop calling you, they'll stop mailing you because they don't wanna waste the money on somebody who's already voted. We take that data and we say, okay, of all the people that have been voted and they've had their ballots processed, this is how many were Democrats, how many were Republicans, how many were old, how many were Latino, you know, and all these kind of demographics that, that are used in uh, analyzing elections. And it, it, it's something that we used to just allow privately for our clients, but then at some point we just started making it public because there were a lot of people who wanted to see it. Uh, it's not anybody's personal information. It's all just aggregated like totals for a congressional district or a city. And uh, it's really interesting to look at. The reality is, is that we probably have already had maybe uh, you know, million and a half, maybe two million Californians vote. Uh, most of those ballots are sitting in drop boxes or about to be opened at county registrar's offices starting Monday morning. Um, we're probably going to have record turnout this year and we're going to have record early vote as well. Generally what happens is that people get their mailed ballots and for the most part, people kind of hold on to their ballots. Maybe they come on a Tuesday or Wednesday, um, that first mailing that goes out. And usually what happens is most voters who do regularly vote early will fill that ballot out over the weekend, throw it in the mail on Monday. It'll show up to the county registrar like the following Tuesday or Wednesday. And we'll start to see a lot of numbers come up maybe uh, 10 days after absentee ballots have been cast. In 2018, as of Friday, um, you know, two days ago, uh, in a regular election cycle in 2018, we had 8,000 ballots returned. In 2016, we had 13,000 ballots returned. And this year, on an equivalent date, we had 250,000 ballots returned. So with 250,000 ballots, now you can look at an image of the state, you can drill down to a legislative district, you can see good data in terms of uh, you know, something that's really meaningful. And that's why we put it up earlier than we normally do. Um, it was just this kind of mad rush of ballots coming in uh, made the data really kind of start to tell a story, even though it's really, really, really early in the process. If your favorite football team scored five touchdowns in a game, that might be great. But if they threw it into the end zone 300 times, that might not seem so good, right? So the denominator is important. And so when we're saying, oh my gosh, 250,000 ballots came in, that's out of 20 million ballots that were mailed. In the primary, uh, 16 million ballots were mailed. In the, uh, in the 2018 general, 13 and a half million ballots were mailed. So the denominator, how many ballots were mailed is, is something that is really high this year. And so we, we know that it's kind of not exactly an apples to apples comparison to say 250,000 ballots today versus in the primary or the general in 2018 or the general in 2016. Um, put in another way, 100% uh, of the ballots are being mailed this year. Uh, in the 2018 general, it was 67% of ballots were mailed. In the 2016 general, 61% of ballots were mailed. So when I tell you that we've had a 20 fold increase in the number of ballots returned by Friday, the first week of ballots going out, that's huge, a 20, 20 fold increase. Um, but even if you account for the fact that there's more ballots out, it's still a 12 fold increase over 2016. So we're still talking massive growth, but it's not exactly a one-to-one -one comparison because we do have so many ballots mailed. There are some other states that maybe they used to mail out 
20,000 ballots, and now they're mailing out 2 million. That is a real big deal and a real big change for a lot of those other states. The trackers updated uh, throughout the day uh, during the week uh, on, uh, we get most counties uh, will get their data every day. Uh, at worst case scenario, we get data you know, three times a week from some counties. Uh, Saturdays are kind of hit and miss whether or not we get data on Saturdays. And generally, we don't get data on Sundays except for the Sunday right before the election. Um, so the data is updated every, you know, constantly. Then every night at around midnight, we start a program to run that will create PDFs of, the, of this and email it to people who've requested it. And those run overnight and get in people's you know, email by you know, three, four, five in the morning. The general pattern we see with mail-in ballots is the first people that return their ballots are older, higher socioeconomic, uh, more likely to be conservative or Republican, um, homeowners, and, the, and they're essentially the more stable voters. They're the ones who vote every election, and they've just gotten into a pattern of mailing in their ballots once they get them. It's kind of like my in-laws who, like, when they get a bill, they have to mail the bill back the same day, or they feel like, you know, out of, it's not like, uh, it, it's, a, it's a habit. And a lot of voting has to do with habits. Um, you know, for years I voted at my old elementary school, the one I went to as a kid. And that was a thing every year or every election year, I would know, like I get to go down to my old elementary school and go back to, through the, to the lower field and, and vote in the cafeteria. And so those habits are ingrained. And when you see early voting by a lot more conservative, older voters, that becomes, you know, real self-reinforcing for them. And you see that year after year on the flip side, at the polls on election day, you see a lot of younger voters maybe needing to go uh, register or re-register. You see a lot, uh, a lot more Latinos and, and lower socioeconomic voters and a lot more renters. And you see a lot more diversity in those election day votes and people who mail in their ballots really late. So given this construct, what ends up happening is on election day, the ballots that are counted and reported first are those older, more conservative voters. The ballots that are counted and reported and maybe a couple of days later or a week later, those are gonna be more of the uh, progressive voters, the younger voters, the more minority voters and traditionally more democratic favoring voters. And it creates this thing that they call the blue shift, which is the initial results come out really conservative and Republican and they kind of shift to be more democratic over the course of the ballot counting period and in 2018, we saw, I think about five congressional districts where Republicans were winning on election night and then they were losing by the time all the votes were counted. And that was because as we counted more and more ballots, we were getting more of those newer registrants, more of those younger people, more of those college students counted. And that was shifting those races. Now, given these huge numbers we're seeing right now, a lot more of those voters that are traditionally late are now voting early. So a lot of Democrats and younger voters are seeing their friends post on Instagram, like, hey, I'm voting at the Dropbox. So they wanna do it. And I'll call it like the this selfie wave of the early vote where a lot of young people and a lot of people who are progressive and are afraid that the post office is being slowed down, they're really rushing to get their votes out. So what impact does that have after the election when we're counting votes, it might almost eliminate that blue wave, uh, blue shift. It might actually mean that the early votes that are counted are a lot more representative of the final vote. Uh, and the late votes don't have a huge democratic surge because a lot of those voters will have voted early. You know, for the last 10 years, I've been working at political data and before that working on campaigns. And we actually are really integrated, I think, a lot with the election infrastructure in California as well. Um, it's a PDI is a voter data company that's been around for uh, over 30 years. And not only do we obtain data from a lot of the counties, we also work with the counties when they need things that maybe we're a little bit more adept at doing. 
Um, we also work with the Secretary of State's office. And, you know, I served on a task force with the Secretary of State's office when they were looking at how to convert the election system for this general election to be safer in the COVID uh, era and, um, and, you know, deal with an all male election system. I've also been in position of being adversarial with the Secretary of State's office. I worked with ACLU on a lawsuit dealing with uh, signatures on uh, ballots and making sure that counties had a uniform way of ensuring that ballots that had signatures that were missing or bad could be fixed. Um, and so there's a lot of uh, a work between PDI, not just in our business sense, but also working with elections and working with a lot of the nonprofit groups around the state and universities around the state that are doing research in elections as well. So we're really, you know, uh, kind of an integral part of the uh, of the election system in California. Well, most of the people that are using it are people who are following elections. Um, they might be running for city council themselves. They might be running a campaign. They might be, you know, a candidate. Uh, or an elected official, um, or they're somebody like a professor or somebody who follows elections regularly. Um, for individual voters, the most effective thing is uh, for them just to Google, where's my ballot? Um, the Secretary of State's office has a system where you can track your own ballot, get a test me text message or an email or a phone call when your ballot is received and when it's counted. That's the kind of thing that uh, not only is useful like if somebody calls our office and says, hey, how do you know whether I voted or not? We tell them to go to that website. But um, it also has in research been shown as being the one thing that's most effective, no matter who you're talking to, a Democrat, a Republican, independent, an older voter, a younger voter, it's the most effective tool at confronting a lot of these conspiracy theories and fears that people have around the election system, whether it's you know, oh, the post office is being dismantled, so I can't mail in my ballot. That's not true. Um, you can still mail in your ballot. Ballots, clearly, we just, the state just mailed out effectively 22 million ballots, and clearly uh, hundreds of thousands of ballots came back just within days. So we know that that system works. Um, but allowing people to know that they can track their ballot, just like they track a FedEx thing, or like their, it's like their, uh, you know, DoorDash, like the food's coming kind of a little text message you get. Um, you can get that with your ballot. And it's the one thing that gives people the most security and really can combat a lot of this disinformation. If, if people are interested in following what's going on with the election, uh, the Twitter account political underscore data is uh, you know a great place just to kind of have there. We don't put in political commentary. We don't have a, a political side. Our logo and everything is green because we're not you know trying to be team red or team blue. We're just trying to give out information about uh, elections and about the data behind uh, what's happening. And uh, other than that, I think everybody should know we've got a, an incredible election system that's been well managed by county registrars in the state over the you know many years. There's no state, almost no state, other than you know the the Colorado, Utah, Washington, and you and um, uh, Colorado, Utah, Washington, and Oregon. Those are all mail election states. Right next to them is we're almost all mail election, and so we really are set up for this. Uh, and I think we're going to have a good election uh, here in California. So. I hope people can have confidence in it and, and make sure they turn in their ballot.